So uh, on Saturday, uh, November 4, 2017, the Prime Minister of Lebanon, Saad Hariri, resigned. And he did so from uh, Saudi Arabia, from the Saudi capital, Riyadh, with a whole uh, list of complaints that are mostly were lodged against Hezbollah and Iran. And ever since, there has, the country has been in a, in a bit of a shock because this came completely out of the blue. It is unclear what exactly prompted Hariri to do that. And many people here think that he was actually pressured to do so. Many people think, including uh, high-ranking politicians, apparently even including his own party uh, members, that he's actually being held there, not exactly uh, in accordance to his will, and that the real uh, story behind this is uh, Saudi Arabia launching an attack on Iran and on Hezbollah as Iran's proxy, perhaps um, joining an, a tendency that they see in the Trump administration to get, get tough on Iran, uh, perhaps also as the young crown prince in, uh, in Saudi Arabia wants to consolidate his power. The next day, the day after the resignation of Hariri, he actually detained almost 20 high-ranking princes and powerful investors and or billionaires in Saudi Arabia, basically clearing the ground for his own position. So it is likely that there is a connection between the two, two events. Now, um, there has been a lot of reporting that suggests this is going to lead to an escalation, that the Saudi uh, rhetoric against Hezbollah, which is quite uh, strong, I must say, and then talking about Hezbollah being in the government uh, as they are currently, uh, as that being like a declaration of war. Um, in the meantime, the, the Houthi rebel fired a missile at Riyadh. The Saudis see Hezbollah's hands there as well. Um, it's all a, a war of words, uh, but I think the, the likelihood that this will lead to an escalation here in Lebanon is for the time being uh, rather slim, because Saudi Arabia does not have any assets here to start a conflict from their end. There, has been, there have been ideas, there have been proposals that there's actually a, a cooperation between, or an agreement between Saudi and Israel, that so to speak the Israelis would attack Lebanon on Saudi Arabia's behalf. I think the, the Israelis may have reasons to, at some point uh, in the future, to attack Lebanon over the, the arms that Hezbollah has, about the missiles that they have. There is a real threat there, so one could imagine that uh, someone in, or the leadership in Tel Aviv thinks that this is something that they need to address at some point. Uh, but I think they will do that on their own terms. They will do that at their own pace and on their own agenda and not because something is happening in Saudi Arabia. Now, there's one uh, substantial threat though here, which is to Lebanon, which is that uh, Saudi Arabia may respond uh, with economic sanctions, economic pressure. There are fears that uh, they may uh, expel Lebanese uh, emigres who work in the Gulf. So we have about 160,000 Lebanese estimated working in Saudi Arabia. We have the same number roughly in the other GCC countries uh, on which uh, Saudi Arabia can, of course, exert pressure to follow its lead. So if we think the worst case scenario that indeed, like let's say a quarter of a million Lebanese citizens are expelled from the Gulf, that's uh, a massive disaster for those people, of course, but also for the country in general because they send remittances. And the remittances amount to roughly four to five billion dollars uh, annually. So in a small country like Lebanon, where you have uh, a GDP that is around 50 to 60 billion dollars, uh, five billion dollars are obviously an enormous figure. And so that would affect the economy of Lebanon uh, severely. It's already an economy that is under strain. Uh, let's not forget the Lebanese have to uh, take care of a, uh, roughly a million and a half Syrian refugees. Yes, the international community helps, but it's nowhere enough. So uh, the, the Lebanese have lost export routes through Syria. So a lot of products that they have are now being flown to wherever the export markets are, which m makes them less competitive and so on. So if that would be another uh, very severe blow and that would be something that could perhaps uh, 
destabilize the country. So if there's one advice one can give to uh, external friends of Lebanon, who are also in some cases friends of Saudi Arabia, like the US, like uh, European countries, it would be to dissuade the, uh, the Saudis uh, from this uh, course. Because, frankly speaking, if this country is destabilized, if this country has a se severe political problem, it's not going to harm Hezbollah. It may actually benefit to Hezbollah. And I don't think that is anything that the Saudis can possibly want or intend with what they're currently doing.